Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series on the teleological argument for the existence of God. In this video, we're going to be looking at David Hume's objections to the teleological argument. David Hume is going to be offering some objections to our argument from analogy that we saw in the last video. The argument went something like this. If you want more reasons maybe to believe in some of these premises or some justification for this argument, watch my previous video. For now, I'm going to be taking a look at some of Hume's objections to these premises and to the argument as a whole. First off, Hume is going to object to premise one. He says that the analogy between nature and man-made artifacts is not a good analogy. In fact, nature is not like human artifacts in a lot of ways. Nature is alive, artifacts aren't. Nature is self-sustaining, artifacts are not. The cosmos, according to Hume, is much more like a living thing than a machine. So, according to Hume, this seems to be a bad analogy. Now, Hume's not really going to object to premise 2, and he'll admit that it may be true for specific cases, but it's only relevant via premise 3, and Hume's going to have a big problem there. Now, if you know anything about David Hume, you know that he has a big problem with cause and effect. His ideas about causality are very unique and interesting. However, putting that aside, he has some other interesting objections to premise 3. Basically, even if premise 1 is true, there are many other ways to explain away the design nature of the world, including things like chance, or just enough possible worlds such that all possibilities end up being realized. A similar argument is often used to deal with the cosmic fine-tuning argument, for example. But the main meat of Hume's objections are going to be to the argument as a whole and to kind of the conclusions of the argument. According to Hume, even if the argument is completely successful, it has not shown that an omnipotent or omniscient god created the world only one with a very large but finite amount of power or knowledge. There's nothing to show that the god that did all this is all-powerful or all-knowing. And it seems to me that this is a problem that constantly comes up for arguments for the existence of god. It may prove something is out there, but the inference then from that something to God is always very, very fuzzy and seems to me to be ill-supported, especially in this case, as Hume notes. And in fact, the natural evils in the world, like disease, seem to indicate a less than perfect designer, or maybe more than one designer with varying goals. It seems the best explanation, even if we do conclude that there is a designer, is that that designer is nothing like the god that we would hope for at the end of this argument. And more importantly, and I think this is one of the better objections that Hume has, if human-like intelligence is one of those things that appears to be designed, then if the argument implies that humans have a designer, it equally implies that god, something with human-like intelligence, or nature's designer, has a designer as well by the same argument. And if you think that argument is flawed, you must think the original argument is flawed, and so it's self-defeating. This will, of course, create an infinite regress of designers going all the way back. So if we think that human-like intelligence is one of those things that appears to be designed, then it seems to be that we have an infinite regress of designers, and the argument is just going to kind of run itself out of steam unless you believe that God is just an infinite regress of designers, which seems to be an odd concept for God. That was Hume's objections to the arguments from analogy. Next up, I'm going to be offering some of my own objections to add on to Hume's to the arguments from analogy. Then we're going to take a look at the watch argument. Then we'll probably take a detour into Bayesian statistics before we get on to the abductive arguments and finally the cosmic fine-tuning argument. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.